Hey guys, yeah, so Brian was supposed to, Brian, our co-founder, was supposed to be here. Unfortunately, he's swimming somewhere in some of the flood there, so um, you are uh, here with me. So what I'm really going to talk about is the custody solutions that are out there um, in the field. And earlier today, we talked a little bit about the importance of interoperability in the Web3 space and why it is important to have um, the blockchains look more like an infrastructure rather than just an ecosystem. So this time I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, asset custody fields and why programmability, interoperability, and collateralization, these are our key principles that is currently in the traditional market space and why it is important for the blockchain industry to also um, embrace these principles. So let's look at the current um, ecosystem in custody solutions. We, it's, it's a very fragmented environment. We have things like uh, centralized custody vendors like Coinbase and Binance. It's centralized under vendor control. It's not your keys, not your coins. You've heard that phrase before. Um, it is also not programmable. It's limited to the functions by the vendors. We have things like TSS, uh, Fireblocks is a big name, right? We have Zengo. Um, it is also, in a way, centralized. If you take a look at their architecture, they own the servers that they operate in or many of the servers that they operate in. Uh, parts of the keys are stored in those servers that they manage. Uh, it's a cumbersome recovery method uh, if you lose your keys. And again, it is difficult to program. They have a particular set of uh, functions that they maintain, and it's very costly to, to uh, customize it for your specific needs. And then we have things like multi-sig, uh, BitGo, Armory, et cetera, et cetera. It's not universally compatible with all different protocols. It's tied to a wallet address, right? It's not easily changeable to change policies or keys. Um, and the signatures themselves are recorded on chain. And then you have uh, account, account abstraction. You guys all know what account abstraction is. Again, it is not fully programmable. It only works for EVM chains. Uh, it is not blockchain uh, agnostic. And it's also not secured cryptographically. So this is the current fraction, you know, fractionalized or, or, or yeah, fractionalized uh, ecosystem in the custody uh, custody world. So let's talk a little bit about programmability, why that's important. So right now, the custody solutions limitation and programmability is that you either are limited. Uh, the vendors themselves choose exactly what they will provide for you. What they offer is what you get. It's expensive to create customized solutions, even if there is an option that's available. Uh, cumbersome to, to recover your keys if there is a loss of key or even a change uh, in your keys. And the technology is limited. You only have basically TSS or multisig. You have other things like a kind of abstraction, but again, as I mentioned, they're not cryptographically secure. So I want to just do a quickly, uh, a really quick, you know, dive into MPC. Uh, it enables generically programmable privacy smart contract language. Um, it also offers multiple different tools in the tool set. You have TSS, multisig, uh, Shamir secret sharing, uh, oblivious sharing, garbled circuits, CKP. We also provide homomorphic encryption. This also provides a lot of flexibility in the type of custody solutions you'd like to deliver. Uh, and then we've been recent researching this stuff for a long time. And I'll kind of dig a little bit deeper into that in a bit. So we also talk about interoperability. Currently, the custody solutions are limited in regards to interoperability, right? It's either you're limited to a particular chain, EVMs, for a kind of abstraction as an example, or it's centralized solutions tied to a particular key or a particular vendor. And again, limited to different technologies. And our view is that you really need to have a key management solution that is interoperable across all multiple different fields. Collateralization, let's talk a little bit about collateralization. You've heard, for, for, for many years, you've heard multiple different hacks in bridges 
where you've lost you know, hundreds and hundreds of millions of real world dollars as a result of hacks. So we also feel that it is important to be able to have some sort of a collateralized system so that in the event that there is some sort of a hack, you are actually insured for the assets that you're depositing into a custody solution. It means that if some, for some crazy reason, some strange reason or some you know, uh, unforeseen reason, there's some sort of a malicious activity and your assets are lost, can you have a system that actually insures and collateralizes? If you're putting your money in a bank, isn't it insured? This is the kind of system that is needed in the blockchain. So let's talk a little bit about our MOCA system. It's the, uh, the MPC on-chain custody advanced solution at a glance. We have uh, multiple different capabilities, uh, TSS, uh, adding and removing keys, uh, changing of voting power for a particular user if they need to have a different power when they do to sign, um, generate pre-signatures, uh, rotate and recover keys if you have a particular key, but you need to now remove that and put it into a different key solution or a different key itself for a custody uh, solution, then you can also do that. Um, and, and so on and so forth. And the main point that I want to make with this slide is that it is important for a custody solution to be programmable, to be programmable for your specific needs and not just stuck with a particular custody solution that other vendors provide. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the different potential solutions that we have. We have three different solutions, and the reason why we're able to provide three different solutions to go back to that customization, you know, customization method, you know, uh, philosophy that I spoke about earlier uh, in regards to being able to program for the specific needs that you have. So we have things like you can actually bridge assets into our network. Uh, we currently support Ethereum, BNB, Polygon. We'll be supporting Cardano uh, to do cross-chain. Uh, we'll be supporting other assets like WBTC, uh, USDC, USDT. You can custody them directly into our blockchain utilizing our MPC technology. Or perhaps maybe you don't want to bridge it into our system. Maybe you want to keep the assets on the other chain itself. But you want to have it protected by multisig. Well, we can do that. We can actually implement a multi-sig solution, creating multiple different keys in our chain and allowing the signature with the assets actually still stored in the smart contract in the native chain, whether it's Ethereum, BNB, or Matic. And we'll be onboarding other chains like Cardano as an example. Or perhaps you're looking for more of a secure cryptographic solution to actually sign the transactions themselves using TSS. You can actually keep the assets directly in your account, but still be able to transact securely using our TSS solution. Multiple different types of solutions customized for your specific needs built by our programmable multi-party computation technology. So we talked a little bit about the bridging over, right? Uh, you'll be bridging the assets over into our chain, protected by our MPC using our BYOC and custody contract, which is insured. These assets that are moving in are insured. If there's a loss of, uh, loss of uh, your assets, then you are protected. We also have multi-sig. If you still want to keep your assets in the native chain, but want to have multiple different people sign for, uh, for any kind of action, then we can provide that as well. And then we can also do TSS. We can do things that Fireblocks can do, except that all of our nodes are decentralized. There is no centralized area where, you can, where, where a central entity keeps any parts of your keys. And then now we can actually transact securely 
through our, our blockchain. So we have Ethereum here, but we can change that to different types of tokens. We can change that to Cardano, or we can change that to Cosmos, or whatever change that you feel that you need. We can cryptographically secure that, build the keys in the Partizia blockchain ecosystem, and then allow it for the signature to pass through to the native chain. So at a really quick high level, Partizia blockchains Agnost agnosticism, am I pronouncing that right? Agnosticism and decentralization allows, and th these are the principles that, that are founded in our chain, in, in, our, in our, when we built the system itself, these were the principles that we founded uh, our chain on. Um, we're interoperable, right? Uh, no protocol support is required for MVCs. That's all the keys, uh, all the key pieces, uh, sign transactions off chain. Uh, all the nodes that are used for computation is independent, decentralized. They're all KYC or KYP. We know who they are. And only the final signature is recorded on chain, right? Uh, unlike multi-sig. Um, ensuring that the third parties cannot discern what the participants were doing um, when the transactions are made. And the flexibility, the programmability in Partesia blockchains, MPC allows you to build a particular solution customized for your needs. If you want a particular governance structure, you can do that. If you want to change, add, uh, manipulate different, different ways of working with your keys, if you want to split the keys up into 100 pieces or you want to split the keys up into five pieces, uh, you can also do that with our customizable uh, language. And it is a public network. It's a low cost of, low cost of development. Unlike uh, custody vendors, which from what I understand is up to a couple of million dollars sometimes to, to provide a custody solution, this is a low cost deployment. It is a public network. It is free for anyone to use. And this is our roadmap. We have solution one, which is currently available. Solution two that we spoke about, which is the multi-sig solution. It's coming very soon, the next few months. Uh, and solution three, which is TSS, it is coming within the next six months. So now, the question is, why should you trust me? Why should you trust Partija Blockchain? We bring in more than 35 years of research and 15 years of commercial use. This is not a, not a, a chain uh, that you will see um, anywhere else. We are based on scientific research and, and real commercial use. In fact, if you go to Wikipedia, you will actually see our name as the first commercially used MPC solution back in 2008, I believe. We have, you know, uh, we have, we have well-known people in the industry, in the cryptographic industry, people like Claudio Landi, we have Jesper Nelson, we have Ivan Damgard, uh, the creator of the Merkle Damgard hash function. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with this. Some of the cryptographers here may know his name, but he's the one who created the Merkle Damgard hash function, which is used, which is the basis for MD5, SHA-1 and SHA-2 encryption. This is the technology that built the internet when it came out. A thousand plus research papers, 61 commercial applications, 75 team, uh, 75, uh, team members, uh, all working on research and um, implementation in cryptography. And so we talked a little bit about MPC. What is MPC? Multi-party computation is a way for you to be able to collaborate and compute on private data. This is exactly part of the technology that Fireblock uses, right? Is TSS is a part of multi-party computation. It is just one aspect of multi-party computation, and it, is, it has been created by Ivan Damgard back in the 1970s and 1980s. So TSS is actually used, I'm sorry, uh, Fireblocks is actually using TSS, which was uh, in many ways uh, founded by us. We also have our collaboration bridge, allows for multiple different assets to be bridged over in a collateralized and insured way. 
And then we also have a scalability model that's also very unique. In other chains, you have a single blockchain. And the single blockchain is continuously adding its block to the end of the block. But we went back to the original definition of what sharding was, which was back, actually created in the 1990s. We actually have multiple different blockchains running in parallel, each of them parallel producing blocks. We have a sub-second finalization, true finalization time, and we have a eager block creation, which means we do not have an epoch time. Immediately after the finalization of a block, the next block gets created. All four shards doing the exact same thing in parallel, and if there's congestions, we add another, another shard to increase horizontal scalability. And so I want to leave you guys with just a, a quick thought, I think. Um, in the blockchain world, people think that there's only one solution that's going to fix everything. But when you really look at the, the nuances and the deep um, the nuances for any type of a solution, there's a lot of different moving pieces that requires an extreme amount of careful thought and implementation. And we think that through our technology, we were able to solve, we were able to solve the, the fragmented industry in the custody solution. Um, I'd be happy to talk to you guys about other solutions that we have, things like RWA, things like uh, privacy, uh, and also with interoperability as well. So I wanna thank you guys for your time. I'm glad that you guys are stuck here because there's a large audience uh, with the rain, so really appreciate your time, and I hope everybody gets home safely. Thank you very much, Ruth. <laughs>